talk about how can we measure gas pressure, not just of the air, but of a particular gas that's in the tank. So the first question is, just to kind of get the ball rolling here, talking about pressure, if you go higher up into the atmosphere, so let's say that we had a mountain over here, and so here's you standing down here on the mountainside, okay? Or here is somebody else that's standing up here, our little stick figure up here on the mountainside, okay? So as you go higher up, do you know what happens to air as well as everything else? What brings, what holds us down? Gravity. And so guess what gravity does to the air molecules? It pulls them down. Down toward where? Where is gravity pulling toward? The center of the earth. So as you go up higher, are there more air molecules or less air molecules? Less. So if we were able to blow up what the air would look like here, we would have more air molecules, in this case here, and we would have less air molecules up here. Well, so then the question is, what about the pressure of the air? Well, as you go higher up, if there's less air, then there's less what? Pressure. Air pressure. Perfect. So up here, the air pressure, the pressure of the air is actually lower. And down here, the pressure of the air is actually higher. Okay? So what we're going to say is, as you go up into the atmosphere, it ends up being lower air pressure. And we say it's due to what? Gravity. Perfect. It's due to gravity. Just like gravity pulls us down, the air molecules are pulled down. But we know that because things that are less dense do what? They float, they rise, those will be higher up. Okay, so things that are less dense will end up rising. So you're playing a game of hockey on Orchard Lake and the ice beneath you starts to crack. What are, you, what are you supposed to do? Has anybody ever heard this before if you were playing, uh, if you were out on a lake and the ice was supposed to be frozen but all of a sudden it starts to crack? What do you do? Just call it out. Drop and spread, You're supposed to spread yourself out. You're supposed to lay down. You are supposed to spread out. Okay, why? Well, let's first just go back and talk briefly about pressure. And we said that the equation for pressure is pressure is equal to F over A. What is the F for? Force, which is pretty much, in this case, talking about what? What would be our force? Your weight and gravity, right? But your weight is what's pulling you down. And what's A? The area. The area beneath you. So what we basically want to do is, if we are in a situation where the ice starts to crack, we want to decrease our pressure. We want the pressure to be lower because what's happening is the ice is starting to crack because there's too much of a pressure on top of it. So if we want this to decrease, well, you could try to change your force, but that requires you removing your boots, removing your coat. If you had skates on, try to take those off. Well, in the midst of that, what's probably going to happen? You fall. you fall through the cracked ice into the really cold, ice cold water. Okay. So we don't want to do that. Instead, what we want to do is we want to change our area because it's easier to change. How could you get this number to go down? What would you need to do to this number in order for this number to go down? <laughs> this needs to increase. Perfect. So as our area, as we increase our area beneath us, the pressure decreases. So I've heard in the past when I've said, what do you do? And they go, get off the ice. How do you get off the ice? You run as fast as you can. Well, the problem with running as fast as you can, especially if you're wearing skates, how do you run on skates, typically? Push off. You push off on one. So if you're trying to push off and putting pressure into a toe, how is that worse than spreading yourself out? Why does that make it worse to be on one toe? All of your force is now in one tiny, tiny little place. So you're adding all of this pressure into this one little spot, or all of this force into one little spot. And so in that case there, if that's your area, your area is decreased, then your pressure is actually going to increase, and that makes it even worse. Okay? All right, so let's flip the page here. Now we're going to talk about is two different um, uh, types of measurement of gas. Okay, The first one we're going to talk about is how to measure air pressure, so the pressure around us. And what they use is... They use a barometer, and this word here, baros, actually is Greek just for air, okay? So it's a meter for air. 
And so this measures atmospheric pressure, or in parentheses, we can just write air pressure. And the man's name, he's an Italian scientist, and his name is Evangelista Torricelli. What do you notice? What in his name stands out? The Tor. The Tor. Awesome. We said the Tor was the same thing as what? Millimeters of? Mercury. Mercury. Okay. So what ended up happening was he ended up finding that as you go higher in levels or come down lower in levels, you can actually change the level of mercury inside of a bowl. So here's what the setup was. So it's a draw bowl. Everybody draw a bowl. And inside of this bowl, we have Hg, which Hg is simply mercury. And inside of this bowl, he inverted and vacuum sealed with a torch a tube. And so here's our long tube. And then there was a ruler that basically went alongside. And so we're just going to mark the tube. So either on the outside or there's a ruler that's attached to it. And what ends up happening is there's a level, a certain level of mercury. Let me just draw the mercury here in a different color. Let's get some red. And so there's some mercury that's inside of here. And what he noticed was as he went up in the atmosphere, so as he went higher up, as he went up levels, what ended up, what do you think ended up happening to the pressure? So as he went higher up, what do you think happened to the level of mercury? It decreased. It went down. Why would it go down the higher up? Well, the higher up you are, we know that there are air molecules. And the air molecules are all around this container. Okay, they're all around this little setup that he has. And the idea is that the air pushes down on here. So this is the air, and the air is simply pushing down on the mercury, keeping the mercury down. Well, the more air pressure there is, what's going to happen is it's going to push down more, and inside your tube, the mercury level will then go up. If there's less air pressure, it's not pushing down as much. What ends up happening is... The mercury level can actually come down on the inside here when there's less pressure because the mercury on the outside can rise slightly, okay? So as you, he went up levels, what he noticed was the Hg level, the mercury level dropped, and then as he went down, as he went down, the mercury level rose. And when he put this ruler up against it, he actually used millimeters. And so what you could do is you could tell how many millimeters of mercury it was. So they would say 760 millimeters of mercury. They ended up setting um, sea level. They marked sea level as a per particular value. And we'll talk about that later on too. But that was the basic idea of the barometer and how the barometer worked. Okay. We don't have any barometers here because we can't have what? Mercury. mercury. We can't have any mercury. And if it's alcohol-based, alcohol evaporates, and so it's, if it's an open container, then that's more difficult to have because uh, alcohols evaporate so readily, too. Okay, so then the next thing is manometers. Manometers measure gas pressure, and I have an easy way of remembering this. So I just say, man makes gas, okay? Man makes gas. So barometer is for air pressure. Manometer is for gas pressure. In other words, you're going to take a tank of gas and you want to check to see what the gas pressure is of that tank of gas, okay? Or if you have a balloon or something like that and you wanted to find out what the pressure was. So what you're going to do, it says there are two types. One is called open end and the other one is called a closed end, all right? The open end is exactly what it says. It's open to the atmosphere, okay? And the atmospheric pressure will affect it. The other one is closed. The closed one is vacuum pumped and it's sealed with a torch and so the atmospheric pressure does not make a difference anymore, okay? So we're going to actually start off with the closed end manometer because that one's a little bit easier. Um, they're both pretty easy, but that one's easier than the open end. So if we have here a closed end, so let's just make sure that we know this is closed, okay? This is a closed end, which means it's vacuum sealed. And what you basically do, they call this a J tube a lot of times too, and you'll end up sketching these and we'll just draw a J. Over here would be our gas. Sometimes they call this the flask, okay? They call that the flask. But really, you could just have a tank of gas that's connected to this side. Here you have a valve. 
And what you can do is you can open that valve, and as soon as you open the valve, the gas molecules are able to flow inside of here, okay? The gas molecules flow. Also inside of here that is permanent is a particular level of mercury. So what I want you to do first is on the right side, let's pretend we had a ruler going along this side, and we're gonna mark from zero to 800 every 200. So let's go zero, 200, 400, 600, and 800. And what I want you to do, so remember, you're on the bottom one, not the top. You're not on letter A, you're on letter B, okay? So on the bottom, what we're going to do is we're going to mark the mercury. Let's say that it comes down. If you were to cross over to the other side where zero is, let's cross over to the zero on the other side. And then let's take it up just below the 800 mark. So this is our mercury that's inside of here. So this is the HG. That's the mercury that's inside of there. And that's not going to change because it's vacuum sealed, torched, all of the other stuff. So your mercury level is not going to change. This is just going to basically rise and fall, okay? It's going to go back and forth. And there's an equation for this, and it's really easy. If you want to know the pressure of your gas, all you're going to do is you're going to find out the pressure difference between the two sides. So on the left side, I'm at zero, and on the right side, let's say that I actually was able to check my markings and it ends up being 760, okay? 760 what? This is in millimeters, so we would have to say this is millimeters of mercury. So what we're using is milli a millimeter scale. So then I'm gonna say the pressure of my gas is simply equal to 760 millimeters of mercury because that's what I, my difference is between my two sides, zero on this side and 760 on the right. Okay, so let's try another one where it's not zero on the left and 760 on the right. So once again, let's do this again. So we've got our gas on this side. Let's draw a valve. So there's a valve over here. And we're going to open up the valve and we're going to let some of the gas come through. And now let's do our scale again. Zero, 200, 400, 600, and 800. And again, this is closed. Okay, again, it's closed up. So now on the left, let's do 200 on the left, so where it would mark up to where 200 is on the left, and then let's get 600 on the right. So 200 on the left and 600 on the right. And then let's get our mercury inside of there. Okay, so same thing. In this case, all we're gonna do is we're gonna say that the pressure of our gas is simply equal to the difference between the two sides. Anybody wanna guess? What is it? 400. How are you getting 400? 600 minus 200. Perfect. Okay. So all you're going to do is you're going to subtract the two sides, and 600 minus 200 is 400 millimeters of mercury. That's really easy. So in a story problem, they may just say the difference between the two sides is 460. Guess what the pressure of the gas is? 460 millimeters. So how are they going to make it any harder? The only way that they can make it harder is if they ask you they want it in kilopascals or they want it in atmospheres. So let's say we want this in kilopascals instead, okay? What do we do? We're gonna throw in a bridge, cross our units, opposite, perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go 400 millimeters of mercury, throw in a bridge, cross the units opposite, millimeters of mercury, and we're trying to switch to kPa. So, we're going to use what we know where they're equal to each other. And we know some values. You can look at your notes. You don't have to memorize it. I'll give these to you. But does anybody know at sea level what standard pressure is in KPA? It's 100 and something. 101.3. Awesome. 101.3 KPA. Does anybody know what it is in millimeters of mercury? 760. Very nice. Again, you don't have to have it memorized. But the sooner you do, the faster you'll do these problems. Okay. So now all we need to do is multiply and divide these two numbers. So, and what you should get, three sig figs, four sig figs, three sig figs, so we want three. I'm getting 53.3 kPa. Okay, and that's it. That's how you do a closed end manometer. Really easy. The only, the hardest part is if you had to convert. Okay. So now let's come back up to the open end manometer. All right. In the open end, things are different. And the reason why things are a little bit different is because the atmosphere is now involved, okay? So what that means is 
the atmosphere is actually going to be fighting with the gas pressure. And they're going to be fighting with each other, and the levels will be falling and rising depending on which one's higher. So the equation for this is very similar. The pressure of the gas, though, is the pressure of the atmosphere plus or minus the pressure difference. So look, we're going to talk about that in just one second. Let's start this off first with, um, let's do the same thing. We've got a gas on this side. Here's our valve again. Let's throw our mercury in, okay? And let's do our scale. So let's say our scale goes, again, same thing, 0, 200, 400, 600, and 800, but now it's open to the atmosphere. So in this case here, um, let's say the pressure of our atmosphere is... 750 millimeters of mercury, okay? And um, by the way, in the US, we don't use millimeters. What do we use for length? What's our standard unit of length that we use? Inches, we use inches. If we go to the Weather Channel, to weather.com for example, and so what you do is, typically you have to click on current details, and so when I click on current details, you see the pressure here. What is that? 29.97 what? Inches. Inches. So guess what we have to do if we want to use it in science? We have to convert it. All right. So back to this one, we're in millimeters of mercury out here. And so that's the pressure of our atmosphere. Would that mean that if, if we said that we're at a different elevation, would you expect this to be higher than sea level or lower than sea level if the pressure is less? Lower. Lower than lower pressure but then what about your, what about your atmosphere, what do you think that your, um, your actual level is? You're probably higher up in the atmosphere, perfect. If the pressure is lower, then that means that you're probably higher up, there's less air pressure. Very good, okay. All right, so let's make this an easy one first here. What I want you to do is I want you to mark 400 on the left, and then I also want you to mark 400 on the right, okay? And then we're gonna fill our mercury inside of here. And remember, the mercury level isn't supposed to change, that would remain constant, okay? What's happening is we've got air molecules. And air molecules, just like with the barometer, are all around. And so the idea would be that the air pressure is also going to be pushing down on this tube inside of here. Well, opposing that, we've got the gas. And the gas, once we open the valve, the gas is also going to be pushing down there. And so what you can see in this case is both levels are what? Equal. equal. And if they're equal to each other, then the coolest thing about this is, you look at the equation, and let's just write our equation down now. The pressure of the gas is equal to, we said the atmospheric pressure was 750 millimeters of mercury, or tor, plus or minus the difference. Well, what's the difference between the two sides? Zero. zero. It's zero difference. So we don't have to add or subtract any number, it's just zero. So in this case, the pressure of our gas is equal to 750 millimeters of mercury. And you're done. So the question is, what if they're not equal? Then what are you supposed to do? Okay, so let's draw the same thing we just did. So we've got our gas here. The gas is gonna come in on this side. Let's get our scale going. So 0, 200, 400, 600, and 800. And let's get at the pressure of our atmosphere. Um, let's set it as, um, let's make this, uh, set, let's make it in KPA. Let's make it 103 KPA. Okay, let's make it 103 KPA. All right, and then, um, let's come on here and let's do 200 on the left and 600 on the right. So go across to 200 and then up to 600 on the right. All right. So now we're going to write our equation again. And the pressure of the gas is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere, which is 103 kPa, plus or minus our pressure difference. Well, I would have to tell you whether or not I would want your answer in kPa or millimeters. Let's say I wanted your answer in kPa. Okay. First thing is, on the count of three, I want you to call off, what is the difference between the two sides? One, two, three. 400. 400. Awesome. You just look at the difference between here, and the difference is 400 in between. But we don't want to use millimeters of mercury because you can't add kPa in millimeters. So the first thing we need to do is convert it. All right, and I'm 
getting the same as this, it's 53.3 kPa, but that's not our answer now. We need to figure out, this is our pressure difference, so it's 53.3 kPa. We need to figure out, are we adding it or subtracting it from our atmosphere pressure? Well, that depends on who's winning, okay? If your gas pressure is more, guess what you do? Um, you add. If your gas pressure is less, then you're going to subtract. It's kind of like a seesaw, okay? It kind of works like a seesaw. What's happening is the air is pushing down on this side. So over here, we have the air pushing down on that side. And on this side, we have the gaseous molecules that are pushing down here on this side. In this case, it's pushing down more on the gas side. That means that the gas pressure is actually higher. So guess what you do? Add or subtract? You add. Perfect. In this case, we're going to add. If it were higher on this side, that means the atmosphere is pushing down more. So you would subtract. Now, I always have a way of remembering this, okay? What I'm going to say is, most of us are right-handed. Raise your hand if you're left-handed. Raise your hand if you're left-handed. Two people, three people out of the 34 of you, 33 of you, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, if it's higher on the right, I want you to add. If it's higher on the right, higher on the right side, you're going to add. If it's lower on the right, you're going to subtract. Okay? Higher on the right, add. If it's lower on the right, subtract. And it's just an easy way to remember it. Okay? So on the air side, check to see if it's higher. If it's higher on the air side, then just add it. So what's our answer then? So this is equal to 156.3 kPa. All right? So we know our gas pressure is higher. And that's basically it.